In this video, I'm going to talk about five infrastructure as a code tools that you should be definitely aware of as a site reliability or a DevOps engineer. And these are the five rough categories of tools you should know about. So starting with number one, which is about virtual machines and VM provisionings. Now, when you want to deploy the virtual machines and provision those, either you can go ahead and start configuring everything manually, or you could actually write the specification of the VM. Oh, I want to create a VM with uh, this much of RAM, this much of CPU, and uh, any network configuration, all of that can be converted into a code, and you can create a file called as Vagrant file with a tool called as Vagrant. So when you talk about virtual machine provisioning, Vagrant is an essential tool that you should have in your kitty and you should definitely go and read about this and understand how this really works because this can save you a lot of time and automate your VM provisioning process. Now the second tool is related to VMs but this is not about just provisioning the VM because when you want to provision the VMs you are going to start building images or the templates. So you will be baking some images and this is not just true for the VMs. This is also true for the second categories of tools that we're going to talk about is about cloud provisioning. And when you go to cloud, you also need to provision the virtual machines or the cloud servers. Cloud servers are nothing but virtual machines running in a managed environment. So even then you're going to need the images and how do we build those images and bake those images in automated way is where a tool called as Packer becomes very, very useful. Packer is an automation tool which allows you to create a template, define the process of building your image as a code. And this is especially for the virtual machines and the cloud uh, platforms that you would build. Now this brings us to the second category that is about provisioning infrastructure on cloud. Again, either you could do that manually and create, let's say, your virtual private networks, network components, virtual private clouds, the security components, then you go and build an infrastructure on top of that provision, go provision the managed services like, you know, a relational database on AWS that I showed you earlier with AWS um, demos, that is, uh, or you can automate that using some sort of templates. Now, I have already demonstrated to you how CloudFormation works. That is one of the tools here. But CloudFormation is a tool which is specific to a cloud platform that is AWS. Similarly, you have certain tools which are specific to the cloud platforms and you could either use those uh, or you could use a generic tool such as Terraform. Terraform allows you to write and Terraform has its own language uh, called as HCL because uh, Terraform is created by a company, an organization called as HashiCorp and they have their own version of a declarative code similar to YAML but it is called as HCL. Um, now you can use Terraform which is a very flexible, very powerful tool when it comes to cloud provisioning and the strength of Terraform is it can talk to almost every single cloud that you are aware of. That definitely includes Amazon Web Services, GCP, and uh, Azure, but there are many other platforms that Terraform can talk to and convert your declarative code. Again, you declare what you want, write it as a code, ravage and control it, and uh, then launch it with Terraform. Terraform also has certain features, such as you can dry run it, uh, you know, um, smoke test your infrastructure, building uh, code, and so on and so forth. And it has locking system so that it helps you to work with uh, in a collaborative environment in a better way and a cleaner way. You could also use a tool that I'm going to talk about again in the, some of these tools will be overlapping in other categories as well. And one such tool which you'll find mentioned about is Ansible. Ansible is a very simple at the same time extremely powerful tool when it comes to automating uh, cloud provisioning or otherwise uh, we're going to talk about configuration management. So Ansible is the de facto tool today that you would use for any configuration management and that's what I'm going to come to next. So once you have built your infrastructure either using VMs or the cloud and provision it on um, that particular platform, the next thing that you're going to need is a 
config management system. I'm just going to say CM here. Uh, what is a configuration management system? Now, once you have the server up, whatever you want to configure after that, it could be your user creation or package management, installing packages, uh, configuring your application, installing those and uh, connecting one application with another. And if you're doing it in a virtualized or a cloud environment, you definitely need a configuration management system. Now, there are many tools. There used to be a lot of tools here. Uh, the three or four primary would be Chef, Puppet. Ansible actually came in later. There's one more called as Salt Stack. However, with the emergence of the continuous technology, uh, you don't need a lot of configuration management today as it used to be earlier, especially when it comes to the application configurations. Because when it comes to application configurations, now it is mostly being done with containers. And that is going to be the trend in future as well. So you're going to load off or offload rather. Oh, that's, that's the opposite. Uh, so you're going to offload your application configuration deployment to the container system. So whatever else you need in terms of configurations of the underlying system, uh, networking, as well as uh, the basic packages and uh, utilities, Ansible serves a great purpose there. So Ansible can be used as a configuration management system. You can also use it for cloud provisioning. However, if you're going to do a lot of cloud provisioning with a lot of platforms, and if you're looking for every single, almost every single component of a cloud, Terraform is better out there. And it has certain other features as well. Uh, if you're looking just one tool to learn out of this, I would definitely suggest Ansible from the list so far. Now, the next one is the future today and the present and the future rather. So we're talking about container-based deployments and when it comes to that, you can define a lot of things as code as well. And this is where you can write your Docker files, uh, you can use Docker Compose. Docker Compose is one specific tool which can help you write your infrastructure automation, meaning your container deployment autom uh, automation as code here. Using YAML, again, uh, one prominent language that emerges here is going to be YAML because Ansible uses YAML. Uh, Docker Compose uses YAML here. And the next tool that we are talking about is Kubernetes. Kubernetes is how you deploy your applications anywhere beyond your dev environments. So if you're running your containers in prod or staging, or any pre-production environment anywhere else apart from dev, you're definitely going to need Kubernetes and consider that. Again, when it comes to Kubernetes, all the code is typically written using YAML as a programming language. Now, these are the four main categories of infrastructure as a code. There's one more category. I don't, you know, I'm not sure whether it will fit into exactly infrastructure as a code because we are talking about CICD, that is the next, now, when it comes to CI/CD, you typically create those pipelines, and uh, you create those build, test, uh, deployment pipelines with some of the integration tools such as Jenkins. Now, with Jenkins, you can also write your continuous integration and the build pipeline as a code, just like Vagrant has Vagrant file, Docker has Docker file, Compose has Docker Compose file. You have Jenkins file here. Similarly. You can use a deployment tool such as Spinnaker, and Spinnaker has its own JSON or YAML specification that you could use to write your code. Now, these are roughly five categories of infrastructure as a code that you should know about. I'm going to demonstrate tools from almost all of these categories, starting with Vagrant and Ansible, and there's going to be, um, you know, uh, Terraform, uh, Docker Compose, as well as Kubernetes is something that I've already shown an example of. I'm not showing the YAML files here, but I'm going to show you the rest of the, you know, examples and the demonstration of those. And uh, the good thing about these is you can define or write 
your infrastructure as a code using a very simple declarative language. So the theme here is rather than you writing the procedure, the how part, you start writing what you want using a simpler abstracted language. So you write a simple language and that gets converted into the actual scripts and the code and that's what these tools bring to the table. And once you write it as a code, you can then revision control it and you can you know get all the other benefits that you can by defining it as a code and revision controlling it. And that's about the five categories of infrastructure as a code.